Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Chuck from the Real Talk Gaming and Sports Crew. Coming to you with some instant reaction of the 2020 NFL Draft. As we sit right now, it is about 10.45 Central Standard Time, and the draft is actually still going on. But it's Thursday, and your boy's got to work tomorrow. So even though you won't see this till Friday, I wanted to go ahead and get it filmed and get it ready for y'all. Because I got some thoughts. So let's jump into it on this episode of Chalk Talk. All right, so let's start off with what is the most important information. Guess what, guys? We didn't mess it up. The Redskins drafted Chase Crown number two overall. After months and months of speculation, you've seen my video already by now. I called it. It wasn't something that was hard to call. It was the obvious pick. Chase Young, by far, hands down, the number one overall prospect in this draft. When you look at what he can provide coming off the edge, the instant pressure he puts on a quarterback and an entire offense, it was a no-brainer. Not to mention the fact that Ron Rivera, a defensive-minded head coach who hired Jack Del Rio, a defensive-minded former head coach as his defensive coordinator, it was a slam dunk all the way through. You know, Jack Del Rio has coached people like, I don't know, Julius Peppers, Khalil Mack. So when Chase Young was sitting there, there really wasn't much discussion as to who they were going to take. Everyone loves to speculate a trade out. Everyone loves to speculate craziness in the draft. But they, it just wasn't going to happen. And thankfully, thankfully they didn't. You know, you never know what the Redskins. You really don't. I mean, it's been a franchise that loves to roll the dice sometimes. But thankfully they didn't do it this time. And I do think we have a player that, I know, it's crazy to say right now. He's never even played down in the National Football League. But yes. He does have Hall of Fame talent. He can be that guy, all pro, pro bowler. I mean, you look at a kid who had to sit out two day, two games last year for a ridiculous sanction by the horrible NCAA and still led all college football with 16 and a half sacks. I mean, what he's gonna be able to do in the National Football League should be something that we should all get pretty excited about. Yes, he'll be going against better tackles, but his first step is ridiculous. He has a full set of pass rushing moves under his belt, and he's ready to dominate. So I'm very, very excited about the possibilities of him and Sweat coming off the edge, what they're going to be able to produce for this entire defense, because Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, our linebackers, you know, Cole Holcomb, Ruben Foster, if he's healthy, everyone should be excited because Chase Young is about to be double teamed every play. So while he may not fill up the stat sheet, because everyone used to try to say that, oh, he didn't show up again in the game against Clemson. We'll go watch the film. The man was triple teamed, okay? So he's about to be getting double teamed. So Sweat should eat, Payne should eat, Allen should eat. We're all gonna eat. Jim Thomas, Tomasula, and Gift style. So very excited about what's gonna happen with that defense, the coaching that they're gonna bring and you know he's a hometown kid you know it's a home run very excited Redskins fans should be very excited and yes I will be purchasing that jersey so other things that I found pretty interesting in the draft is that you know tackles didn't go as much as what I had hoped so it should be interesting to see what that means for Trent Williams and his trade value for the Redskins I think that having watched you know the draft as it plays out right in front of me you know i'm still watching it um i think really right now the most possible landing spot for trent williams is probably minnesota they still need tackle help they just traded with the green bay packers who the packers then selected jordan love you know quarterback heir apparent to aaron Rodgers, which whew, that's a video for a whole other day probably i mean aaron Rodgers can't be happy right now but I think it makes sense, Trent Williams going to Minnesota, you know, he's got the connection with Kirk Cousins there, he, uh, they need the help at tackle, and they got some, they stockpiled some more late round picks, so we'll see how it happens, either way, I think they will move him, I don't think there's going to be a situation to where he remains a member of the Washington Redskins, but I could be wrong, with the new CBA, he doesn't have much leverage, so he's going to do something. You're going to play for us or play for somebody else, that's for sure. Really though, of all the other things that happened today, we got to talk about the elephant in the room. 
C.D. Lamb landing in Dallas. No, I'm not happy. I don't think any Redskins fan is happy today. Kind of shocked. I mean, it kind of goes with what the Redskins did and picked best player available. And that, you know, when you have probably, arguably, the best receiver in the draft still sitting there, you take him, even though they just invested $100 million in a wide receiver. To me, this signals that the Cowboys really do feel that they're they're there. They're ready to go compete for a Super Bowl, so you have one more weapon to who you would assume would be Dak Prescott throwing the ball, even though technically, again, as we sit today, not under contract. So we'll have to kind of see how that plays out, who's going to be throwing the ball to all these weapons. But, you know, it's not exciting to think about what our secondary is going to have to defend in Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb. But I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Don't get me wrong, the secondary is incredibly important, but your secondary is helped when you have an incredible pass rush. So, while I know I saw some people screaming on Twitter, saying, you know, this is why we should have traded back. We would have been able to get more picks. We could have gotten a corner, blah, 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 blah. You still got to be able to throw the ball. You can't throw the ball if you only got 1.5 seconds to do it. So, Chase Young will get it after the passer. It's going to cause problems. So, do I think that... The, the Chase Young pick will stop C.D. Lamb from being successful? No, absolutely not. He's going to be able to be very good. But do I also think the Redskins are concerned about it in the sense of they're not going to be very good this year? I really do believe that. If anyone's out there screaming the Redskins are going to make the playoffs, I just don't think that's the case. I really don't. I love this team, but we're not there. And I don't think Mama Vera thinks we're there. I think Mama Vera thinks, hey, I got a generational talent at a pass rusher, which is the second most important position in football. I'm going to take him. We're probably going to be not great. Probably win six games at best. Be in the top 10 again next year. We can fix the corner and secondary next year. We don't even know what the football season is going to look like this year. Let's be honest. We really don't. So I am upset. Not the best pick that I was hoping that they are going to take. I was kind of hoping they were going to take a safety because while an impact safety is important, we saw that with Landon Collins and other players. Um, I not as wouldn't have been as upset if they would have taken as Xavier McKinney or something like that. But, you know, a receiver will fill up the stat sheet. It'll look good on paper. And it would probably end up being a good pick for them. But ultimately, I think the Chase Young pick outweighs everything. So let's not that damp our excitement let's welcome chase young to the family be super excited about that and i think this also signals that dan snyder is all in on re getting the fan base back you know he's a hometown kid that everyone wanted and that's what we did so let's reward that let's re let's let the new redskins regime we got to remember that this is something new the last 10 years we've been pretty jaded with terrible people running the place so Let's get excited. Let's not worry about what Dallas is doing. Hamper what our excitement is, okay? Chase, we're super hyped that you're coming to DC. You're coming home. Going to dominate. Got the Predator on the edge. I'm also really excited about the Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Old Spice commercials that are about to be happening. Because apparently Chase Young is sponsored by Old Spice too. So, chasing some sweat. I don't know. It's going to be pretty creative. I'm excited for it. Ultimately, it's a great day to be watching a Redskins fan regardless of what else happened in this draft. And I will say this too, you know, shout out to the NFL for putting on something for us to enjoy in these times where live sports just don't exist right now. So I had a good time watching it. I thought it was creative the way they did, you know, all the different uh, Zoom calls and stuff. Do I miss seeing the players cross the stage and the excitement of the crowd? Of course. But... You know, given the fact that we have had nothing, I think we should all be pretty excited that we at least got to watch the first round of the NFL Draft. I'll give you guys my reactions as the draft continues through the weekend, but overall, in my opinion, we've already won the draft. We got the best player that was out this year. And just think, we could be the Giants sitting at number four who just drafted Andrew Thomas because they beat us in a meaningless game. And imagine poor Andrew Thomas, poor guy. Let's just have a moment of silence for him because imagine being the guy who is the counter draft pick to Chase Young. Yikes. Would not want that weighing on my head. So go to sleep tonight resting assured that 
in the NFC East, I still think we got the best draft of the night. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. I hope you all have a great NFL draft weekend. Thanks for stopping in to Chalk Talk.